Hi guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we're going to share with you a new product that we're adding to the ITS Tactical store. We are making available 4 by 6 inch strips of Velcro loop. This product is good for sewing on to any shirt or pants or maybe a nylon bag that you might have that doesn't have Velcro loop on it that you, can, that you may want to attach patches or some sort of other accessory onto it with. A couple of things that I've wanted to add Velcro loop to for a long time um, is a jacket that I purchased that didn't come with any type of loop on the sleeve and at events I may want to wear a patch, an ITS patch or the patch of another company that we want to show support for. Um, or I also have a nylon bag that shows the manufacturer's logo on it that I've always wanted to cover up. So today what I'm going to share with you is how you can hand stitch some Velcro loop onto a nylon bag and also to just some regular t-shirt material so you can see what it would look like if you want to add it to anything you may have at home. Just to give you an idea of the products we're adding to the store, these are packages of two strips. Each strip is four by six inches in length and we have each color available separately. So we have multicam, black, foliage, and coyote brown. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple of examples that I've already stitched up so you can kind of see how the stitches look on the Velcro loop and how they work with, how this works with different types of material. So here is just a, a generic fleece purchased from the local craft store and this is a nylon twill fabric. So I stitched a square of our coyote brown loop and um, I just stitched this on by hand. And I found that if I used really small tight stitches, it makes the stitching virtually invisible. Um, this section here you can see has been trimmed down from our original four by six length of loop and I did a little bit of fusing with a lighter around the edges so that it made it a little less fuzzy and gave it more of a professional um, line around the edge. And this example here is straight out of the package, very minimal fusing to cut down on a little bit of the, the fuzziness of the loop as it comes, um, and just stitched right directly onto a piece of fabric. So as you can see, you really can't tell where the stitch line is. And part of that is due not only to the small stitching, but also due to the colors of thread that I used. So to sew on the coyote loop. This is also just available at a local Joann's craft store. I picked up this thread which is a Guterman brand thread. It's 100% polyester and the color number is 542. Whenever you're looking for thread make sure you pick a heavy-duty thread. I don't recommend cotton at all. Um, all of the threads that I'll show you today are heavy duty and they're either a polyester blend or they're 100% polyester. So for the multicam stitching, I used a Coates and Clark brand thread. It's dual duty and um, it's also a heavy duty thread, 100% polyester and this color number is 8450. So it blended really well with the uh, shades of green in the multicam loop. So let me flip over these samples so you can see the stitching on the back. You can see the stitching doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's a little rough looking and you can also see that my um, stitches change as I go along. They kind of got better the longer that I stitched and my X across the middle, those are, those are kind of big more basting stitches just for added support, but you can't see any of that from the front side of the loop. I also wanted to show you an example of a sweater that I added some loop to the sleeve. Um, a lot of women's garments don't come already with loop sewn on like some of the men's garments do. So um, I've always wanted to be able to wear a patch whenever we're either at SHOT Show or at another event um, and be able to change that out. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like without the patch. I cut down the black Velcro loop to the size that I wanted and I just stitched it on by hand. You can't see my stitches at all and I even reinforced it through the center with an X. Um, I did go around the edges and fuse just lightly 
so that it kind of gave it a little bit more of a professional look there. Okay, we're gonna start with a piece of our foliage four by six loop. And um, I've already cut out the circle that we're gonna stitch on to a piece of t-shirt knit, but just to give you an idea of what I did, I just had a coffee cup nearby. I put it on the, um, the Velcro loop. I just traced around with a pencil to get the circle that I wanted and just used a standard pair of scissors to cut it out. Um, I did do a little bit of additional trimming once I had it out of the uh, four by six rectangle. Once I had my circle cut out, I did fuse around the edges and um, just a lesson that I learned, you're gonna want to just lightly fuse around it. Whenever you fuse too much, keep the flame too long up against the loop, you're gonna get edges that look a little charred and roll in a little bit too obviously. So be careful if, you're, if you are gonna fuse around the edge with a lighter. So now that we have our circle, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to stitch it onto a piece of t-shirt knit material. This is just in case you have a, a shirt laying around that you would like to add some loop to the sleeve. Um, I know that's a really popular thing to wear for guys who are out at the range or doing any type of training, shooting training exercise. So um, we'll start with the t-shirt knit. The coordinating color of thread that I purchased to that I could find that matched best with this foliage color um, is a Coates and Clark outdoor uh, thread. And this is also a polyester thread, 100% polyester. And the color is 770. Now this is an outdoor thread. It's a heavier, heavier duty thread. Um, so you may have to pay attention to the size of needle that you pick. Um, I just picked up a package of different size sharps needles and there is a larger one in here that we'll use to try and make sure that that thread, thick thread will fit through there. Okay, we've got our needle threaded and all of the supplies that I may, may need handy. Um, I have a thimble. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need it on sewing this t-shirt knit, but you may definitely wanna have a thimble handy whenever you're stitching something like the nylon that we'll show you in just a few minutes. So I've knotted my thread at the end and um, I am going to stitch with just a single length of the thread going through. Um, you can double it up and knot it if that's what you're most comfortable with, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll just, I'll just be sewing with the, the single thickness. I'm just gonna come up through the back and get as close to the edge of the loop as comfortably possible. And as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna want to keep your stitches very short in length so that they're going to be the least visible in the fabric. And as you can see, that's already kind of disappeared into the, into the hook. Um, do make sure that you put your stitches close together. That way you're gonna have a really firm stitch line on whatever it is you're sewing to. Especially if you're gonna be taking patches on and off or something that's gonna be pulling on that material quite a bit. So I've made three stitches so far and the second stitch, the one in the middle, is the one that's most prominent. I made it just a little bit wider than the first and last stitch, um, if you can even see that on the camera. Um, I'm gonna continue around the circle and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's completely stitched on. Okay, so I've finished stitching the Velcro loop onto the t-shirt knit fabric. Um, the stitches are pretty invisible all the way around the edge and this is what it looks like from the other side which is is also pretty hard to see. Um, just what I learned as I was using this outdoor thread, it is a little bit cumbersome because it is so thick. Um, you'll want to take time to let your yarn untwist as you're stitching so that it doesn't get tangled up on you. And um, because I was using the thicker thread, I also used one of the thicker needles in this package. And so it did make larger holes coming through the 
loop as well as the t-shirt knit material. So keep that in mind. If you're adding loop to something that is a, um, a really thin material like t-shirt knit, you may want to go with a smaller diameter needle. However, you're going to have to also keep in mind the thickness of the thread that you're using make sure that you're going to be able to fit it through the eye of that needle. So if you have a smaller diameter needle, but you're able to get your yarn through, go ahead and, and use a smaller needle for t-shirt knit sewing. It'll, it'll leave a smaller impression as you're going in and out of both layers of the fabric. So now we're going to move on to showing you some stitching on nylon. Okay, so now we have all of our supplies ready to stitch some loop onto this nylon bag, but I wanted to give you a little more detail about what I've noticed with regard to needle size. Um, this is the needle that I just used on the gray fabric stitching, or foliage, excuse me, and this is the needle that I used whenever I originally stitched on the black loop onto my sweater jacket that I uh, showed earlier. Now since that sweater material was also a knit, it was very thin, very easy to sew through, and so that smaller diameter needle worked just fine for that, and it helped me to hide my stitches the best. I also used this black thread, and this is, um, as I mentioned, just 100% polyester. It's a dual duty thread, so it's not thick like the outdoor thread that we just used for the foliage stitching is. So it was able to fit through the eye of that smaller needle. It was a little bit hard to get it through, but it worked just fine. Um, so if you're stitching on t-shirt knit or sweater material, I recommend you use a smaller diameter needle. Now with this nylon, we're going to have to use the thicker diameter needle in order to push all the way through this heavy fabric. So let me get my thread situated and we'll get started. Okay, I've got my loop already cut out. I used my patch as the template. I didn't stitch or draw anything on the back since it was black. Um, I did want to point out though that I did not create a true point on my loop because I want to have multiple stitches across the bottom to help reinforce the loop as it's stitched onto the nylon. Um, another thing I want to point out about sewing onto this flap of this bag, it's a very, it's, it's quite thick. This is some sort of vinyl um, and then part of what I'm going to be stitching through already has loop on it. So it's going to be a little, little tough to get through all the layers, but I think my, I think my needle is going to be thick enough to accommodate that. On projects where you don't have such thickness to worry about and you want to hold your loop in place while you stitch around the edging if you're worried about anything shifting, you can use some safety pins or um, you can make really big loose stitches. Not super loose, but easy enough that you can just take a pair of scissors and cut them out when you're finished. Those are called basting stitches and it will hold your loop in place while you stitch along the edges with your, with your smaller stitches. Um, so let me get started here. And I'm also going to use the table to help me push through my needle in some of these spots. And just remember to use small stitches as you're going along. And I'm definitely going to use my thimble for this project as well. So as you can see, stitching on the nylon is definitely a little more cumbersome, but it's manageable. Just make sure you have the right tools to help you finish the project. All right, so I'm going to finish stitching around the edges and I'll show you just as soon as that's complete. Okay, so I've finished sewing on the loop to this nylon bag. Um, I can now sport my patch and I'm ready to go. Um, I did want to point out some difficulty that I had with sewing on this thick of material though. So um, just be forewarned if you're going to stitch on something that has a layer of vinyl and also a layer of um, hook or loop behind it, it is going to be pretty difficult to get through all three layers. Um, it did take me probably close to 45 minutes to finish stitching around that one shape. Whereas 
stitching on the t-shirt knit material or sweater knit material um, only took 15 minutes or something like that. So keep that in mind as you're, you're planning your project. Um, but other than that, it's relatively simple. If you have access to a, a sewing machine for something this thick, you may want to try stitching it on with that. Um, I don't recommend trying to use any type of glue adhesive. The adhesives that I've used on fabric in the past all tend to show through on the back side and as they're exposed to heat and humidity they can lose some of their adhesion. So um, we would definitely recommend you stitch on the loop that we're selling um, either by machine or by hand. Once again you can get these at the ITS Tactical Store and we have them in packs of two in coyote brown, multicam, black, and foliage green. Thanks for watching.